The affirmed has it, therefore our time will be extended. We return back to Dr. Stephen Rummage. Dr. Rummage, would you please continue forward in your report? Yes, thank you so much, Mr. President. The next resolution that we are asking Southern Baptists to adopt is based on one that was submitted to our committee. And from the time that our committee first met together last Thursday, God has put it on our hearts to move forward with our own revision of this resolution. The Committee on Resolutions presents this to you unanimously and urgently. We ask you to join us in calling Southern Baptist to take a further step in the right direction concerning racial unity for the sake of our witness for Jesus Christ and for the sake of showing his love to all people. In keeping with President Bonnie Floyd's emphasis at this Southern Baptist Convention on the need for racial unity and in response to the real needs and hurts of our nation and our churches, I move the adoption of resolution number seven on sensitivity and unity regarding the Confederate battle flag. You will find this resolution on page 12 of the SBC Bulletin, Tuesday, part two. Thank you, Dr. Rummage. The question is on Resolution 7 on sensitivity and unity regarding the Confederate battle flag. Are you ready for the question? Microphone 4A, the chairman, excuse me, the, yeah, whatever. <laughs> the chair recognizes microphone 4A. Thank you, Dr. Floyd. While I appreciate the sensitivity of the subject, and at the same time, I appreciate the kind spirit that's been demonstrated in this resolution to incorrectly link the historic symbol based on the St. Andrew's cause would raise further questions. Number one, would we further challenge United States symbols? For instance, the United States flag that flew over slave ships, or George Washington who owned slaves. I would hope we wouldn't make that move toward political correctness. Secondly, what will we do about Southern Baptist heritage? Will we cease to use names like Broadus and Manley and take Broadman off everything because they were avid supporters of the Confederacy? Will we cease having a Lottie Moon offering because she was a supporter of the Confederacy? Again, I hope not. I would plead with this body to reject this resolution for those reasons and also for the fact that when you get home at the grassroots level, this is going to be a horribly divisive resolution. So in the name of unity and yes, racial, racial reconciliation, don't pass this resolution. Thank you. The chair recognizes Dr. Rummage to speak on behalf of the committee. Thank you. And my brother, I appreciate what you are bringing to the convention and the objection that you raise, but I do respectfully disagree. Uh, we are talking about one particular symbol that is used by some and is perceived by many as a symbol of racism and that causes great harm. We acknowledge uh, that there are those who do not use the Confederate flag with that intention at all. But even so, uh, we see that when people do use that, even unintentionally, that there are those who are harmed. And that's why we call for people to consider prayerfully uh, whether to limit or discontinue use of that symbol. I do not see a pattern that we're establishing here of um, disparaging people from our Baptist history. They were products of their history. What they did is commendable, and they did so many things that are commendable. The people that you name are our heroes and deserve to remain our heroes. And so we're not looking at disassociating ourselves from them. Uh, we are looking at disassociating or asking people to prayerfully consider disassociating themselves from this one symbol. The chair recognizes 
Microphone 7A to speak against this recommendation. Hi, my name is Jason Lupo. I'm a pastor of Parkview Baptist Church in Toledo, Louisiana. And I'm not really speaking against the motion. Uh, I think that, that we need to remove the motion. I know that there are a lot of politics in the Southern Baptist Convention, but this is a political issue, not a kingdom issue. And so I think the resolution needs to be removed completely. Yeah. because that's what the media does. And I think that we as a convention can stand against any type of, of prejudice or, or any of those things that we're talking about this by, by loving people with Jesus, by loving people with the gospel. We've talked about evangelism. This motion, this amendment, this recommendation is, it needs to be removed. Thank you. The chair recognizes someone from the audience on microphone 3A to speak for this motion. Microphone 3A, you are now recognized. Yes, thank you. I'm a 26-year-old Southern Baptist, and at the age of 19, I found myself in Afghanistan. I fought for my country. I brought indirect and direct fire and mortar fire home with me. I'm a patriot. I love my country. But I would remind you that we are citizens of the kingdom of God, and if we find something offensive or divisive within our own ranks, I think that we would first have to realize that we are secondarily citizens of the United States, and first and foremost, children of Jesus Christ and God. And for that reason, I speak for this and support the resolution for the Yes, microphone 2A, do you have an amendment? And if so, would you like to give that amendment? President, yes I would. All right, would you please make your amendment? Yes, sir. My name is James Merritt. I'm a messenger from Cross Point Church in Duluth, Georgia. Mr. President, I'd like to amend the motion, and if I get a second, I'd like to speak to it. I would move that we delete paragraph 6, which reads, whereas we recognize the Confederate battle flag serves for some not as a symbol of hatred, bigotry, and racism, but as a memorial to their loved ones who died in the Civil War and an emblem to honor their loved ones' valor. And then I would like to move the reword, re reword paragraph 12 to read as follows Resolved that we call our brothers and sisters in Christ to discontinue the display of the Confederate battle flag as a sign of solidarity of the whole body of Christ including our African-American brothers and sisters. All right, the amendment has been offered. If you have a copy of that amendment, would you be sure that we receive a copy immediately? All right, you may be able to speak to your amendment, Dr. Merrick, so go right ahead. My fellow Southern Baptist, I'm not speaking to you today just as a pastor of a church. I am the great great grandson of two men who fought in the Confederate Army. One is buried in a Confederate cemetery in Lynchburg, Virginia. One fought in the Battle of my hometown, Atlanta, Georgia. I cannot undo what they fought for, but they cannot undo what I wish they had done and what I pray we will do today. Make no mistake. This is a seminal moment in our convention. I believe that God has brought the SBC to both the kingdom and our culture for such a time as this. What we do today with this issue will reverberate through this nation not just today, but I believe a hundred years from now. This is not a matter of political correctness. It is a matter of spiritual conviction and biblical compassion. We have a golden opportunity to say to every person of every race, ethnicity, and nationality that Southern Baptists are all the people of any flag. We march under the banner of the cross of Jesus and the grace of God.
Today, we can say loudly and clearly to a world filled with racial strife and division that Southern Baptists are not in the business of building barriers and burning bridges. We're about building bridges and tearing down barriers. So I close with this. There is one thing no one can deny. This flag is a stumbling block to many African American souls to our witness. I would like to say that all the Confederate flags in the world are not worth one soul of any race.
Resolution number seven, as amended on sensitivity and unity regarding the Confederate battle flag. As amended, if you are in favor of Resolution 7, as amended, would you raise your ballots? Thank you. If you are opposed to the resolution and the amendment to the resolution, would you please raise your ballots? Then resolution number seven on sensitivity. Kent Cochran was at microphone number four relating to
on any motion. It tells us who has pressed the button first and second and third and fourth. It'll handle up to a dozen people speaking for, against, or people who wish to make amendments. The system is blind. We don't know up here who you are. And frankly, it doesn't matter who you are. You are all messengers. And whether you are a friend of the president or a friend of someone else, or whether you're a past president of the convention, the system, it, it doesn't recognize who you are. It's first come, first serve. And so we follow the order of recognizing people in the order that the blind electronic box gives to us. By the way, there were a number of lights that were lit up. So there were a number of people who wanted, as is often the case, that often there are more people who wish to speak to an issue than there is time allowed to speak to that issue. We came to the end of the time allotted for the resolution report already once. The Committee on Order of Business extended the time once. We came to that second deadline of the time. And so the chair, under the rules, is, is instructed to process the motions that are pending, and then the report is in. Uh, now, our chair, our resolutions committee has not reported out all their resolutions. Uh, they'll have to negotiate with the Committee on Order of Business about that. But we have come to the end of the time that you voted on for resolutions. All the resolutions pending have been adopted. We wish there was unlimited time for everybody to say everything that he wanted to, but those are not the rules. And so, whether you're a friend or whether you're not, those are the rules, it's, it's impartial. The chair is bound to impartially exercise your rules. And so the chief parliamentarian advises the chair to rule the messenger's point of order not well taken. This is the reason that the point of order is not well taken. Chair recognizes Dr. Andrew Bear, Chairman of the Order of Business Committee. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I have two motions.